What is a renovation loan? That's the topic of my next video. My name is Mark Schreier and I'm a licensed sales associate with Century 21 American Homes. In the coming video, I'm going to share with you what you need to know if you're considering buying a fixer upper, a bank owned property, AKA REO, and you don't have the cash to pay all cash. Special financing is required. Stay tuned to this video and learn what you need to know. Okay, everybody, I am with Quentin Hardy of Movement Mortgage, and he's going to answer throughout the course of this video, what is a 203K rental loan? We're going to get into a lot of details on what it is, how you get it, is it a good thing to do? So Quentin, can you tell us a little more about who you are, where you're from, and your expertise as a mortgage person? Sure. Uh, my name is Quentin Hardy of Movement Mortgage. I'm the market leader here in Long Island. Um, I am a 17 year industry veteran and I was the top producer in the nation for renovation loans for a couple of years uh, at the, what was at the time, the number one direct consumer financial institution. Um, I've moved on since then, I'm doing renovation loans other places, but I also have a unique perspective because not only have I done hundreds of these loans, I've also done one on my very own home. So I'm not only the hair club president, I'm also a member. I've been on both sides of the transaction, both as the, uh, the, the consumer and both, that, both as the, uh, the originator. So I have a unique perspective. Uh, just for full disclosure, I didn't choose Quentin because of the hair club president. I didn't expect you to throw that in there, but that's good. Okay, uh, basically when we talk about a rental loan or a 203K loan, we talk about a REO and what is an REO? I'll answer that as a realtor. An REO is a bank-owned property, a property that the banks took possession of through the foreclosure process. And usually, but not always, as um, if you watch my last video about the new breed of or new class of REOs, where some of the banks are actually hiring in investors to, to refurbish them where you can use a conventional mortgage, but a significant majority of bank-owned properties need special financing. Right. So to answer the question, what is an REO? It stands for real estate owned by a bank. And the special financing, I described it in one of my last videos, but I figured why not have a mortgage expert like Quentin Hardy here to really get into the details and answer some questions that I wrote down that people have asked me uh, over the last couple of weeks. So Quentin, can you get into some details like what is a 203k loan? Are there limits? Is it cost effective and all that stuff? Thank sure. Um, I'm going to give you two answers because it's uh, the 203k very frequently gets used as a misnomer. So there's a 203k, there's a 203b, there's a 203h, there's a 203c. It's just a paragraph. And 203b is the normal FHA that you use to buy a standard property condition for a you know, regular person. But the 203k very frequently it, it encompasses all of the renovation loans. It's inaccurate, but people say, oh, there's an investor 203K, there's a VA 203K, no, no, the, the 203K specifically is the FHA version, but there is a conventional version, there's a VA version, there's different kinds of renovation loans. So I like to use the term renovation loan because it's all encompassing, and the FHA 203K is one specific kind of renovation loans. Now, when it comes to the other answer, what is a 203K? It's a kind of renovation loan. What is a renovation loan? It's basically a loan that is going to allow you to purchase a home and use the appraisal, the actual value of the property and condition of the property. It's going to be an as completed version. So for people who've seen the show Property Brothers, that's a great example. They go in and they go, hey, you know what? Uh, you've been pre-approved for 400, but this house is only 300. So you've got 100,000 for work. And we all know, we go to the bank and say, I want to borrow $400,000 to buy a $300,000 house. They say, no, that's not how it works. But that's exactly how a renovation will work. So if you're buying a house that, let's say, is a three-bedroom ranch and you want to convert it to a five-bedroom colonial, you send us the bid and the plans and we know how much it's going to take to buy it, how much it's going to take to improve it, and we can now give you a loan based on the as-completed version. In the REO world, it's very frequently used because these homes are in less than perfect condition. And if you don't have certain things in the house, you can't close with a regular loan. And I know very frequently people say, I have the money, I'll, I'll fix it later. 
the bank has no assurity, no guarantee that you're actually going to fix it post-closing. So the only way they do it is they must include the, that, that number, the repairs, to bring it up to livable condition. Can you and, give, to interrupt, sorry to interrupt, can you give a couple of examples of what a house needs for a conventional mortgage to go through as smoothly as possible? Like a sink, sure. bathroom? There's basically three categories, rather than saying what it takes to become a conventional, there's three categories that make it require a renovation loan typically. One of them is the utilities, water, heat, electricity, and gas. Are they on and operating? If they're not on and operating, there are some cases where you can get away with a non-renovation loan, but typically, if they're off, if there's damage, then you're going to need a renovation loan because a house without running water is not considered livable or without electricity, livable. So that's number one is utilities. Number two would be the completeness of the home. Are you missing things that would normally be in a house? Sinks, tubs, fixtures, missing windows, boarded up windows, leaky roofs, et cetera, et cetera. I had one where we couldn't close because there were no doorknobs in the house. It was easy to rectify. I had one in Roslyn and sometimes people say, oh, it's not much work. It doesn't matter how much work. We had one here in Roslyn where uh, it was a foreclosure. The people had taken the toilets. Everything else was there, but no toilets. You can't buy a house with no toilets, believe it or not. I didn't know there was a market for pre-owned toilets, but that's number two is uh, incompleteness or completeness of the home. And last is health and safety. If there are any health or safety issues, broken windows where someone could get cut, exposed electrical wiring, um, trip and fall hazards, black mold in the basement. And sometimes people say, oh, it's just a little bit of this, or it's very small, it's not much. It's not the quantity. It's are you missing utilities? Is the home incomplete? Or do you have a health and safety issue? Those have to be resolved either prior to closing, whether you're going to do with a regular loan or the renovation loan, you're going to resolve them after closing by giving us a bid, explaining the path to resolution. Okay, there's a lot to go there. And I will say uh, from being a realtor that shows a lot of REOs, I've seen some where they're in really a disarray where the potential buyer has to sign what we call the hold harmless agreement, which yeah. means there's a significant liability, which is what Quentin is talking about, and the banks don't want to be responsible for that. So those would definitely be, be properties uh, where they're not going to pass for traditional financing. So REOs are not for everybody, at least the old school REOs. Is there a cap on the amount of money, the repairs? Some of these REOs are really significant, in significant need of money, maybe up to 100K of repairs. So mm -hmm. what's the cap on these type of loans? There, with the FHA, there, uh, a lot of people think there's a $35,000 cap. That's a $35,000 FHA, which called, used to be called the Streamline, that's now called Limited. Right. The full 203K doesn't have a cap. With the conventional renovation loan, your repairs cannot exceed 75% of the as-completed value. So in reality, the cap is almost a logical one. If you're buying a house in a $500,000 neighborhood for $400,000, if you want to do $200,000 worth of work to it, or you're, just, you're spending $600,000 on a $500,000 house. Right. That might be too much risk. If the house doesn't appraise, the bank won't go forward. Otherwise, the, the real cap is just the, the logical amount needed to repair it in most cases. I very rarely see people run into that 75% cap on the conventional. And, um, and there isn't a cap on the, on the FHA. You could, you could buy a house for a dollar and put $700,000 worth of work into it. Are there any type of structural things like foundations need to be repaired? Can somebody get a rental loan, buy a property, an REO per se, and totally rip it down, remove the foundation, and build a new construction? Is that allowed? Uh, no. Uh, with the FHA 203K, you cannot do any structural with the limited version. You, I mean, nothing that's weight bearing, even something as simple as a floor joist. Okay. However, with the full 203K, you could knock the house down to the foundation. You must keep the foundation, however. The conventional is the same. The conventional doesn't have limit on uh, luxury items. So usually things like uh, in-ground pool, you can repair a limited amount with the 203K, but you don't have a limit on the conventional. Uh, no jacuzzis with the 203K that's considered a luxury item. Those, that's usually the one we run into. But the conventional, there's no limit. But um, I got lost on your question. Uh, any structural limit? Ah. Can you rip it down and build a new construction? You said no. Right, so you, you can rip it down to the foundation. To the foundation. With, with any of the you know, renovation loans, but you must keep the foundation. There's some, some trickiness if you're keeping up a wall, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that. But if a person's intention is to completely remove the house and the foundation, then that's not renovation. 
There's no right. risk involved because it's completely new property. It's a new construction. And that's, that's my right. segue right here to a lot of people might think, oh, and I just got a phone call actually yesterday. Somebody's reaching out and they want to be the investor. They're looking for the needle in the haystack, the perfect scenario. So these loans probably sound great for investors. So at the latter part of this video, I'm going to share some information about A, I'm going to ask Quentin if this loan can be used for an investor, and B, if it can be used, uh, how you can go about doing that. So stay tuned to the latter part of that video, and we'll cover that. One other thing is uh, that I want to mention too, if, you, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, actually two thumbs up now because we've got two people here, to show appreciation that you like the content, and also definitely remember to subscribe and leave some comments for further information or further videos that you would like to need to cover, maybe Quentin, in the future. Uh, with that being said, there's a lot of information out there and I did some research. Is there different credit scores needed? Um, you know, different type of things that are needed for a rental loan versus a conventional mortgage? Uh, nothing really different as far as credit score, debt to income ratio. Understand that typically when you go for a mortgage, you're going down two different roads at the same time. One is getting the home buyer approved based on their income, assets, credit score, probability and likelihood of repayment. And the other road is getting the collateral, the property itself approved, making sure that we're not over lending. We don't want to lend $500,000 on a $200,000 home, for example. Right. Renovation loan, the only thing that's different is the collateral road. So the other road, you know, as far as your documentation, your tax returns, your W-2s, your credit score, that's all the same. It's only going to be the collateral road that's different with the renovation loan. Is it a slower process to be, you know, underwritten and approved than a conventional mortgage? That's a great question. At most banks... Why, thank you. <laughs> it is going to take a little bit longer. The toughest part is finding a bank that's good at it and, ha and a loan officer who's good at these. That's why I'm a specialist. Probably upwards of 50% of my business is renovation loans. If you get a guy who does it once in a while, he's always stumbling through it and it will take longer. Even if you have someone who's good, however, there is one spot that tends to be the bottleneck with a renovation loan, and that's the contractor. I always explain to people, get your contractor involved, get him picked, make sure he has the appropriate licenses and insurance. You'd be amazed how many times they told me the guy was licensed and they sent me an expired license or a license from the wrong county or something like that. So make sure you have a legitimate licensed insured contractor who's responsive. Because uh, if I ask you for a pay stub or a W-2, you can send me that in a day. If I ask you for a bid, now you're dependent upon a third party to respond in a timely manner. And if they don't, you might wait a week. Oh, yeah, I can't make it this week. I'll be there next Friday. Oh, the girl is out. I got to handle the phones. Give me another week. Now you, you, you started running up your time waiting for the bid to come back. So what I always recommend have your, your contractor ready to go, and the minute that your, your offer is accepted verbally, don't wait to get your contract. Get your contractor in there the day you, first day you can to give you a written detailed bid, and it's also a good idea to speak with the lender that you're working with, maybe even do a conference call. That's what I like to do so that all of us are on the same page. Getting a renovation done, done, renovation loan done in a short period of time, a lot of people, you know, I've done them in 20-something days, and people are like, how do you do that? How do you do that? It's not me. It's a team effort. If all three of us are, you know, and, well, actually four of us, it's the, the home buyer, the attorney, the contractor, and the lender. If all four of them are working in sync and add the realtor in there for five, then the team is going to make it happen. Right. And definitely uh, investigate with your contractor. The licenses, like Quentin mentioned, uh, they could say they're licensed in Nassau, but you're in Suffolk. If, you're, if it's a contractor that's saying they do everything, well, elect, electrical and plumbing are separate licenses, so that's another issue that could come about. You have to make sure you got all the different trades and the proper licenses. So definitely reach out to the mortgage person and possibly your attorney and make sure all your ducks are lined up before you find that house because once the bank accepts your offer, they have a timeline. They want to get it off their roll as quickly as possible. And if you're now starting to struggle getting everything lined up, they might sell it to somebody else. Can these type of loans be used by investors, people who want to flip a house or any type of investor, Quentin? Uh, yes, they can be. Now, with the FHA, it's for a primary residence, so you're not buying it as, a, as an investment. And for the VA renovation loan, same thing, primary residence. Now, if someone bought it as their primary residence, 
and stayed there for more than a year and decided, okay, now I'm going to sell my primary residence and buy a different primary residence, they could do that. Now that's not obviously your typical investor, but I have seen people do that. They buy it, fix it up, you know, sell it. The conventional renovation loan can be used for an investor only on a one family, not on a two, three, or four, but on a one family. Typically I see buy and hold investors do this. If you're gonna be a fix and flip type guy, then there's other alternatives such as hard money that most of the fix and flip investors are going to use for various reasons, probably right. this video. But if you're gonna buy it and keep it, yeah, you can use a renovation loan as a, as a one family uh, investment property. Investor. Uh, any closing words, Quentin? I really appreciate this uh, interview. Um, I would just say that if you're gonna be doing this kind of loan, to make sure you're working with someone who knows what they're doing. And um, you can always, of course, get a great referral from Mark Schreier. I, th I think he knows a good rental guy. I think I know a good rental guy. And I, on that note, I'd also say that when you're dealing with REOs, bank-owned properties, you also wanna make sure your team knows how to deal with the REO because it's not a traditional transaction. You're dealing with banks. You're not dealing with a, a home seller, you know, that lives down the block. It's a corporate, it's a company, it's a bank owned or a corporate owned entity. And there's mm -hmm. different uh, guidelines on how the offer has to be presented. So if you're not dealing with a team in this case, a realtor that knows or has worked in this type of scenario before, you put yourself at a disadvantage, just like in the case of rental loans. All right, Quentin from Movement Mortgage, I really appreciate your time. And uh, for you guys out there, thanks for watching.